you remember when we talked about fractions the first time and I said, I gave a definition, I said a fraction is part of a whole, it's uh, a division, and it has three forms? Well, we're going to really touch on all three of those points today, um, except for the part of a whole, but we're really going to be working about the three forms that, that, that fractions have. They have the fraction, they have a decimal, and they have the percent. Now, um, I put some bullets here that you might want to write down. I will be erasing at least these bottom three in a minute. Uh, I guess the first thing to start with is how, you, how to visualize this conversion process. And this is how it's in my mind anyway. This is how I have it set up in my mind, is that the decimal is kind of in the middle, okay? It's kind of the glue that holds the, the fraction and the percent together. So, for example, if they gave me a fraction and they wanted me to convert it to a percent, I need to go, th I need to convert the fraction first to a decimal and then I can get to the percent, okay? And vice versa, if I was going from a percent to a fraction, I got to go from percent to decimal to the fraction, okay? Now a decimal can go either way, straight away. It can go from a decimal, it can go straight to a percent, or from a decimal, it can go straight to the fraction. So that's what I mean, the, the decimal is kind of in the middle, it's kind of the glue that holds it all together. Um, a couple of concepts that we're going to look at today, real quick is place values and multiplying, and I should have wrote dividing, but multiplying and dividing by factors of 10, okay? And I put this last thing here. You, you should know by now how to work with fractions. What I mean is how to multiply, how to divide, how to convert mixed to improper, improper to mixed, how to reduce, how to cross cancel. So there's a lot of stuff to know about fractions. If you're a little rusty on that, you might want to go back and see my other videos on Let's start with place value, okay? All right, bam, there it is, place values. Uh, I have my little chart that I copied out of the book, and I think we've all seen this at one time or, a, or another in our lives. So I have all our place values, we have thousands, hundreds, and one, tenths, hundreds, and thousands. I have such a hard time saying that. Anyway. And I put a number here just as an example. So this would be 2,563.148, right? That's usually how most people would, would say that. But, um, all right. And I think it's kind of funny because we don't really say these place values after a point. We say point, and we just say point whatever, right? Point nine nine nine. that's all we say. We say that we always express these place values, though, and I feel bad for these little guys because we always say these guys, but we never say the, 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 the ones that are to the right of the decimal. We always say, I have $100. We say 100. We, we express that place value immediately. Or I have $1,200. We express those place values, 1,200. And so, but we don't express these. We just point, eh, whatever, it's change. It's, it's too small to really matter, right? I don't know why we don't do that. Poor little guys. Who knows? So anyway, we're going to learn how to express those little guys that I feel so sorry for. All right. Um, I asked my students, how would you say this amount? A lot of my students just say 0.2. And that's very understandable. I mean, everybody knows what that means, 0.2. You put the point, you put the two after the point. Now I ask my students, can you guys say this without saying point? And that's where they kind of, well, I don't know. I forget. I don't remember. Well. This is where the place value comes into play. So the two is one position or one place value to the right of the decimal point. So what that means is I have to look it over here. Um, my decimal is here. One to the right is going to be tenths. Okay. So this would be two tenths. And you're saying the same thing as point two, but we're not saying it with the point. We're saying two tenths. Okay. Let me put another one. What if it was? 0.25, can we say 0.25 without saying point? Um, yes. We say the number, and then we, we say the place value. So we say 25, and the places that the 25 gets or reaches, it goes to, it goes from, there's two, uh, two, place values, two place values to the right, which would be hundredths, okay? So one, two, hundredths. So this would be 25 hundredths, all right? What if I put a one in front of the decimal, on this side, to the left of the decimal point. I have students that say one twenty-five hundredths or one point two five. 
And they're close, they're close. Can we say it without saying point? When we have a whole number, and if, it doesn't matter how big the whole number is, but when we have a whole number, a point, and then uh, an amount, a decimal that's smaller or after that decimal point, we have to say with. Instead of saying point, we say with. So this would be one with 25 hundredths, okay? 21 with 256 thousandths, okay? That's just to give you an example of how to say this without saying with all the time, all right? So let's go back to that first one really quick. Um, okay, so two-tenths, that would be, it's important to know that because that, that's how we're gonna get to a fraction in just a little bit. I showed it here, two-tenths. And you need to know that fractions need to be reduced, so this would be one-fifth, okay? If you don't know that, go back to the videos. All right, so that's basically the little, my little spiel on place value. It's just a matter of practicing how to say amounts or decimal amounts without saying point, okay? And to say it, you just read the number. If it's, if it's, I'll do it again. Well, I already did it. You know, you just read the number if it's two, if it's 25, if it's 256, and then if it's two, it's two-tenths, if it's 25, it's 25 hundredths. Or if it's 256, that's three place values, that's 256 thousandths, okay? All right, what I want to talk about now, though, is these factors of 10, multiplying and dividing by factors of 10. So what is a factor of 10? What does that mean? Factors of 10 are basically 10, 100, 1,000, etc. okay? So it's going to be a one with a zero, or two zeros, or three zeros, or four zeros, or five zeros, or a million zeros. Those are all going to be factors of tens, okay? Factors of ten. Now, let's just take a number like... Okay? How would you say that without saying point? It would be 219 with 3,154 ten thousandths. And I know I don't have the fourth place value here. I'm missing that because I ran out of my little board. It's kind of small. <laughs> so, but it, it just goes on forever, right? It goes on, etc. And same thing in this direction. It goes on to ten thousands, hundred thousands, etc. Okay. But anyway, let's take this number and let's multiply it by ten. How would you do that? Don't get your calculator. It's not. We're not using that. It's a lot easier than that. You're overthinking it. Don't. If you get a calculator. Or if you start writing the little line, the little multiplication, and you put 10 here, and you start doing the multiplication by hand, that's overthinking it. It's a beautiful thing when we're working with factors of 10, with these kinds of numbers, because it's just a matter of how many zeros that number has. And that number of zeros tells us how many places we're going to move our decimal. The other thing you need to pay attention to is what multiplication means and what division means. Multiplication is going to be an augmentation, or, or, or it means that it's going to get bigger. We're going to make the number bigger. That's what multiplying means. Division is a, is a, a diminishment, or making something smaller. So if I'm going to multiply this um, by 10, okay, that means that my decimal needs to move to the right. Because if it moves to the left, right now, as it, as it stands right here, I have 219. Now, if I go to the left, I have 21.9, blah, blah. So I don't want to get smaller. Multiplication means I got to go bigger. So 10 has one zero. So I'm going to move the decimal point one place value or one position to the right. Okay, so then that would be like that. Now I multiply 219 times 10 and I get, now I get uh, 2,193 with 154 thousandths. Okay, let's multiply it by 100. Let's take that first one again. I'll start back where I was originally. 219 with 3,154 ten thousandths. And we'll multiply it by 100. Now 100 has two zeros. It's still multiplying, so I still gotta go to the right. But it's gonna be two places now. Okay, my decimal would be here. And that would give us, what, 21,931 and 54 hundredths. Okay, eh, you getting the hang of this, right? It's kinda cool. Uh, let's try, let's leave it, let, let's, uh, let's leave the decimal point where we have it now, and let's go ahead and divide by a thousand. Let's try that out. What would that look like? Well, dividing is going to be moving the decimal to the left or making the number smaller, okay? 
So a thousand has three zeros, so I got to move that point one, two, three places to the left. So now I have 21. And hang on, let me write this down. I can't talk and write. Okay. So it'd be 21 and what, what is it? 93,154 one hundred thousandths, I think. I think you got that right. Okay, but the, the, the key here, what I want you to understand is multiplying and dividing by these numbers is really easy. You're just moving the decimal point, the number of zeros that that uh, number has. Okay? All right. And you're probably wondering, why is that important? What are we doing here? All right, well, actually, let's go ahead and start doing an example. Let's start with a fraction, and let's take it all the way to a percent. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff here. Let's see here. So let's start with an easy one, right? Let's start with like, oh, I don't know what, like one quarter. Now how do I get one quarter? Now what do I do? Can I get, can I get the fraction straight to the percent? No, I have to go to the decimal first, okay? I don't like my four, sorry. Not that it's much better, but it makes me happy, okay? <laughs> All right, so how do we get a fraction to a decimal? Now you have to remember that first video on fractions, I said fractions part of a whole and it's a, it's a division. So we can divide. So how do we divide this? Here's my little division house, right? What number goes on the outside, do you remember? It's the denominator, it's the four. Always the denominator goes outside. So does four go into one? No. We have to put a point and say that it doesn't go in, right? Because it doesn't go in. So 4 goes into 10, though. So 4 goes into 10 two times. With the remainder of 8. Okay, and we do the subtraction. And we get a remainder, I'm sorry, with the remainder of 2. And then uh, we add another 0, bring it down. And that will give us 0.25. Now, I think a lot of you might have already recognized that, well, quarters. 25 hundredths, or at least 0.25, right? So, okay, there it is. We got it. Done. All right, well, almost. We got to get to percent. Now, there's a funny thing about percents, the word percent. If some of you speak Spanish, um, and if you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, in Spanish, percent actually literally means times 100, okay, which is Hey, that's what we were doing with the factors of 10, right? We're timesing and, and dividing, or multiplying and dividing with factors of 10. And 100 just so happens to be a factor of 10. So we need to be able to divide this, not divide, I'm sorry, multiply this by 100. Okay, we're going to multiply our decimal by 100. Remember, multiplying 0.25 by 100 is really easy. Multiplying is moving the decimal to the right, making the number bigger. And 100 has two zeros, so we're going to move it two places. Okay, so the percent would be 25%, or 25, if you want to see it with the decimal, point nothing percent, okay? But we would just normally put 25%, okay? And that's how we do that. So from fraction to decimal, you have to divide the fraction. From decimal to percent, you have to multiply the decimal by 100. Okay. All right. Okay. What, do you want to try one with a, a different one? Let's try a different one with a percent, and let's get it back to a fraction. Okay. So I'll put the 40% over here. Let's put a 40%. And how do we get to fraction? We have to go through decimal. We can't just directly jump, unless you're already very, you know, well practiced in this, but anyway. So how do we get the percent into a decimal? Well, it's the opposite of what we did earlier. Um, I guess the way you can think about it is a decimal is a percent that got divided by 100. Or you can say a percent is a decimal that got multiplied by 100. So it just goes back and forth, okay? So to get the percent, to knock this little sign off, we have to divide it by 100. So I guess maybe the tricky part here is where's the decimal point in 40? It's not here, it's not here. That would be 0.4. That would be 4. 
it has to be after the last digit, after the zero, so that it would actually be 40. So even though they don't put it, you have to understand that it is there, okay? It is there. So we have a little decimal point. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down. We have our decimal right there. So, so in order to divide it by 100, we just move the decimal to, to the left, right? Two places to the left. And we're going back this way now, right? Okay. So that's how we do that. It's just so this this kind of these two conversions are really easy. It's just decimal to percent, move the decimal two to the right. Percent to decimal, move the decimal two to the left. That's it. It's real straightforward. Now, how do we convert the 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 decimal? Sorry, the decimal to a fraction. How do we do that? Well, this is where place value comes in. Remember place value. We have to say the number, this one, without saying point. How would you say that? I'll put it back here so you guys can see it. What would it be? What would that be? It would be 40 one hundredths. Okay? Still struggle saying that. All right, so I'll go ahead and put it here. 40 over 100, because it's two place values over uh, to the right of the decimal point. Okay. Um, and remember, fractions cannot be left in this form, so I'll just start reducing. And that would be, I'm going to divide, I, I'm canceling the zeros. I'm going to divide both of them by two, and that would give me um, two fifths. Okay. So that's what we're saying here. Two fifths is equal to 41 hundredths, or 0.40, or just 0.4 for that matter. Um, okay. And then it's equal to 40%. All right. Let's see here. I don't think I'm going to do one with just a decimal, but I do want to show you one more that's really kind of tricky. Um, and it kind of brings it all together, I think. So let's try, let's try this one. Oh, sorry, that should be a one. What on earth is that, <laughs> right? That is the funniest looking decimal I've ever seen. Um, it looks like a fraction, looks like a mixed number. It's not, it's actually a decimal. Remember, here's our point. Everything to the right of the point is less than one. That's like the fraction, right? I mean, that's like the smaller, it's less than one, okay? All right, so how would you say this though? I mean, because you need to know how to say it to, to be able to you know, change its value and stuff change its, its form. Um, you know, I think we can just convert it to a percent right away. What do you think? Let's just multiply it by 100. One, two. So then that would be eight point. We could say that. Or we could convert the fraction, the third, into a, a, uh, a decimal. So it's just a complete decimal with the, with the percentage, OK? So anyway, just to repeat, we're moving the decimal two to the right, okay? And that would be eight point, so that's why I just got rid of the zero, eight point one third. If you already know and you should already know about fractions, that would be eight point uh, three three percent, okay? The trick is, weird as that looks, that's really not so bad. And I got the point three three just by dividing the one, one divided by three. Okay, it's one of those ones that goes on for infinity. All right, so, but let's go back to this. How would you say this? Because I gotta know how to say the decimal to be able to get it into a fraction form. Now hold on to your hats, okay? Because this is where it gets a little strange. This would be, you would say this as eight one hundredths, I'm sorry, let me say that again. I said that wrong. Forget that. This would be said eight and one third one hundredths. Okay, so you say the whole amount, eight and one third, and you count the place values. The, the one third does not hold a place value, so it, it wouldn't be like uh, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. No. The fraction part of this does not hold place value. It's just these two that will hold the place value. So this would be tenths and hundredths. So it's eight and one third, one hundredths. So what does that mean? Well, that basically means that it's, uh, I'll do it over here, 8 and 1 third divided by 100. 
and this is where your knowledge of fractions comes into play. You've got to know how to do this division. So I'll start. Uh, it's going to be 8 and a third divided by 100. And if you remember, 100 has to be over 1. Now I've got to convert my mixed number into an improper fraction which is a multiplication and an addition, going in this direction. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 1 is 25, over 3. Right, you guys can still see that? Yeah, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Remember that? Taking the inverse of the second one so I can change my division to a multiplication. And this is where you got to know something about canceling. I'm going to cancel the 25 and the 100. They can be both divided by 25. So 25 divided by itself is 1, 20, 100 divided by 25 is 4, and now I just do my multiplication. 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 4 is 12. So the fraction form is 1 twelfth. Okay? So that's a tricky one. That's a really, really tricky one, okay? Just to repeat, this is 8 one hundredth, sorry, eight and a third, one hundredth, not one thousandth. The fraction does not hold place value. All right, so if you guys think you got it, and I don't know if you do, we'll just give it a shot. I have some example problems here for you to try, like I usually try to do. Okay, so here's your chance. You can pause the video, and you can try to do your best and answer all and fill the chart in. So what's 20% in decimal? What's 20% in fraction? Here's a decimal, you need the, 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 the percent and the fraction, fraction, decimal percent. Okay, so just fill out the chart. And I put in one of those tricky ones down here, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and I'll, and I'll do it here in a second. Okay, how did it go? Did you get it done? Did it work out okay? Um, we'll start off with the 20%. Now remember, the 20% is an easy one. Well, I'll say it's easy, at least for me, but... So let's start with that. 20%. Where's my decimal point in 20%? Has to be at the end. They don't put it, but it's there. Okay, don't forget, because if it was in between, that'd be 2. If it was over here, it'd be 2, or 0 0.2, right? It'd be small. So for it to be 20, it has to be where after the 0, okay? Now, to get to a decimal, I have to divide by 100, okay? So that's easy, right? Just 0 0.2. Yeah, that's easy. 0.2, that's my decimal. Now with the decimal form, I can get the fraction. How do I do that? I read the decimal. How do you say that this decimal without saying point? Two tenths, okay? So two tenths is two over 10, which will reduce down to one fifth, okay? And that's the first one. So one fifth is equal to two tenths is equal to 20%. So now let's go ahead and do the point 0.3. Uh, you know, I think this one's the easy one. Convert to the percentage I think is the easiest. So let me uh, just erase this one and I'll put the point 0.3. Okay. So to, mul to get to a percent, we've got to multiply it by 100. So that's easy. Just move the decimal point two places because 100 has two zeros. One, two, and I put a zero here. So it'd be 30%, right? Thirty point nothing percent, but if there's point nothing, we don't put the point. Okay, that's just why the that's why the points are the decimals never really there, because there's no there's no change there's no uh, no change there's no um, there's no leftovers I guess right it's just thirty and that's it you know so anyway okay so now let's get the point three to a fraction form to do that what do we got to do we got to know how to say point three without saying point. So that would be looking back at our place values, right? That's 3 tenths. So I just put the 3 over 10. Get rid of that now. 3 tenths. Can it be reduced? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. So that wasn't too bad. That one's 3 tenths. Okay. Let's go ahead and try 1 eighth. All right. So I can't take 1 eighth directly to a percent. I got to go through the decimal form first. So now how do I do? How do I convert 1 eighth to a decimal? 
you divide. Remember, fractions are always divisions. That's what this little line here in the middle means, okay? So, uh, let's see here. The denominator will always go outside the little division house, okay? Eight does not go into one, so we have to put a decimal and bring the decimal to the top, add a zero. Eight goes into 10, two, one time, <laughs> two times, no, one time, okay, with a remainder of two. Move that over a little bit more. And if I have a remainder, that means I can add another zero. I can add as many zeros as I want till infinity after I put a decimal point, if you didn't know that already. All right, so I'm gonna bring down the next zero. Eight goes into 20 two times with 16 and a remainder of four. I still have a remainder, I can bring down another zero. Eight goes into 48, oh, I'm sorry, five times. Eight goes into 45 times. So it's 0.125. There's our decimal. And we already know to, to convert the decimal to a percent is just moving the decimal two to the right or multiplying by 100. So I'm not gonna do it anywhere else. I'm just gonna say it's gonna be 12.5%. Okay, so we just move the decimal two to the right. That's pretty cool. So I don't think those ones are too difficult. Here's this tricky one again, right? Oh man, not that thing. Weird looking decimal thing from a bobber. All right, so I'll put it over here. It says 66 or 0.66 and two thirds. First of all, where do you want to convert it to? Where do you want to convert it to first? Maybe we'll do fraction first this time, okay? So how do we convert it to a fraction? This is where it's hard. This is the hard one, okay? To do that, we have to know how to say this decimal without saying point. So this would be 66 and 2 thirds hundredths. Because remember, just to repeat, the fraction does not hold a place value. Only these numbers do, okay? So we have tenths and hundredths, and that's it. So I have to put 66 and 2 thirds over 100. That's what I'm going to be dividing, okay? All right, so let's get this division going. Uh, all right. Divided by 100 over 1, okay? I've got to convert the mixed number into an improper fraction. That's going to be 200 over 3. And I'm going to go ahead and take the inverse of the second fraction. And I do that so that I can have an opportunity to cancel. It doesn't always mean that I can cancel. It just means that it gives me the opportunity to cross cancel. And in this example, it works out nicely, right? 100 and 200, they can be um, reduced or divided by 100. So 100 divided by itself is 1. 200 divided by 100 is 2. Now I just do my multiplication. 2 times 1. 2, 3 times 1 is 3, so it's 2 thirds, okay? So the fraction form is 2 thirds. Yeah, it's a lot of work just for a fraction that says 2 thirds. Jeez, right? Okay. Now, okay. To convert this to a percent, the easiest way is just to move the decimal 2 to the right, which would give us 66 uh, point two thirds percent, right? But I still don't like looking at the fraction personally. I mean, that's right, but it just kind of looks a little messy, I think, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change that. To do this, I'll, I'll do it right down that right space right here. I do. Okay, cool. So it's just taking that two thirds and converting it into a, a decimal. So it would be uh, three, or two divided by three, right? And 3 does not go into 2, so we put the decimal. It goes into it uh, 6 times with 18. And you will see that this will just keep going on forever as 0.66666 until you're tired of saying it. And so I'll just put 100, you know, 100, uh, you know, two place values after. And that's what that would be. Okay? So you could say 66 and 2 thirds percent or 66.66 or 6666 or 6666 percent. Okay? So good luck. I mean, that's basically how you do these conversions. Remember that the decimal is always in the middle, okay? So if you want to get to fraction to a percent, you've got to go through the decimal, and vice versa. Percent to fraction, you've got to go through the decimal, and the decimal can go either way, okay? <laughs>